Each year, residents of Waukesha County, Wisconsin, gather to celebrate the annual Waukesha Christmas Parade. After almost two years of fluctuating COVID restrictions, resulting in the parade being canceled during the year 2020, locals were thrilled to finally get back to celebrating the season with their friends, family, and community to end 2021. And we begin with breaking news in Waukesha. Multiple people are dead, more than 20 others hurt, including 12 kids, after an SUV plowed through the annual Christmas parade late this afternoon in Waukesha. Carnage caught on video. Thank you for joining us. I'm Bill Walsh. A red Ford Escape SUV drove through a barricade at North Hartwell Avenue and East Main Street. <laughs> Since the event was being live streamed, there were multiple webcams set up to film the paraders as they marched through the streets. One of these webcams was positioned outside the Waukesha County Historical Society and captured the red SUV speeding past the Carroll University Marching Band. The vehicle was traveling at approximately 40 miles per hour. The vehicle proceeded to West Main Street between Gasper Street and North Barstow Street, where it sped through the crowds of participants and bystanders. Members of the Waukesha South High School Marching Band were hit first. followed by the Waukesha Blazers Baseball Fast Pitch Softball Club. At this point, eight-year-old Jackson Sparks was struck by the vehicle and was the first child to die in this tragedy. As the vehicle moved forward, it struck and killed more victims, including Jane Kolick, aged 52, who was walking next to her company's float. A famous group of paraders called the Dancing Grannies were the next ones to be struck, and with that, four more innocent lives were taken. 52-year-old Tamara Durand, 71-year-old Leanna Lee Owen, 79-year-old Virginia Ginny Sorensen, and 81-year-old Wilhelm Bill Gospel, a group helper whose wife was a member. The SUV fled the scene, and as it approached Wisconsin Avenue, three shots were fired by a police officer in an attempt to stop the perpetrator. <laughs> All three shots connecting with the vehicle. However, the SUV continued down Northwest Avenue and escaped the authorities. The aftermath of this horrific attack left six dead and more than 60 injured. 17 out of the 28 victims admitted to the hospital were children, and nine of the victims were left in critical condition. Within minutes, what was once an event to signify unity and joy in the community would become a disturbing reminder of the horrific events that took place that day. Law enforcement was immediately alerted, and they rushed to the scene. The red SUV had vanished, leaving the police at a standstill. Soon after, however, a man was captured on several cameras as he wandered through yards in the surrounding neighborhood. This man appeared to match the description of the driver of the red SUV. This same man appeared on a ring doorbell camera at a nearby house, trying to convince the homeowner to call an Uber for him. Hey. Can I, I call some, I call the Uber and I'm supposed to be waiting for it over here, but I don't know when it's coming. Can you call it for me, please? I'm homeless. I'm It wasn't long before police were able to track him down and arrest him. This matches the description of the guy that got called on who was going door to door over here. What is your name? This is Darrell Edward Brooks Jr. Darrell has a felony record that dates back to 1999 when he slashed another man's face with a knife. For more than two decades, Darrell has been in and out of criminal court with convictions ranging from domestic violence and child sex crimes to firearms, drugs, and battery. Here is a full list of Darrell's charges between 1999 and 2012. For this charge from 2011, Police say he tried to flee from a traffic stop, where a frightened officer felt that Darrell was trying to run him over. 
At the time of the parade, Durrell was also out on a $1,000 cash bail related to the charges filed earlier in November in Milwaukee County. These charges were for punching and running over the mother of his child. Erica Patterson. You may be beginning to notice a pattern, and it is quite possible that this criminal history, combined with the video evidence against Dorrell, could already be solid enough to obtain a conviction. However, the strongest and most effective piece of evidence that a prosecutor can use in court is a confession. So, investigators in this case work to obtain just that. My shoulder hurts too bad right now. Sure. Uh, they got you some McDonald's, I see. Yeah, I couldn't really eat it, man. I'm... What'd they get you? Fish sandwich. What'd they get you for breakfast? Uh, some type of little sandwich. I didn't even eat it, though. Okay. All right, what'd you eat last night? Nothing. Nothing? I know they got you something, didn't they? I mean, some, some from Quick Trips and chips, and so I didn't even eat it. Okay. Yeah. I know you said you hadn't eaten since, like, Saturday, so... Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I like... tried to, but... Just kind of, because you're unsure of all what's happening? Unsure, the pain, I don't yeah. know. What, I'm like, what in the hell? But you got something in your system now so that you're not so... Just a little bit, yeah. Okay. Good. I'm Good. glad. That's, that's something. I know you, I know the shoulder's struggling. <laughs> Bad. <coughs> shoulder's worse I, than the knees, though? Absolutely. I know something is wrong. I know. I know something is wrong. Before we analyze this interrogation, it is important to understand that Erica was in Waukesha County at the time of the parade. The reason she was there in the first place was to attempt to avoid Darrell after the assault that had just taken place a few weeks earlier. She was staying at a women's shelter for the time being. However, Darrell traveled all the way from Milwaukee to that women's shelter and followed Erica in his car as she walked around the county. During this pursuit, Erica eventually got into Darrell's car and she was assaulted, resulting in a black eye. This occurred just moments before the parade rampage. The end of this domestic dispute can actually be seen on another doorbell camera as Darrell pulls over. He can be seen in a fit of rage as one of Erica's current neighbors steps in to intervene. Only after the neighbor is pulled away does Darrell walk back around to the driver's side of the car and speed off. This plays a significant role in the detective strategy going into this interrogation. Only thing I wanna know is what in the heck am I being charged with anything? Well, she's making some, like I said, alleged allegations against you kind of, you know, for being physical. So that's what, you know, if that's BS, that's what I'm looking to hear from you. Okay? Total BS. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of, we couldn't track her down, so that's, that's kind of where we're at. It's this typical back and forth stuff that guys like you go through with their baby mama all the time. And they're all, you know, there's a lot of guys out there in your spot. You know, and a lot of times, you know, maybe it's it's not always fair to them, but that's kind of what I, I wish they had a law out. to where people could, if you do that shit, you should get in trouble. Sure. Yeah. What brought you to Waukesha yesterday? How did you get out here? I was meeting up with a friend to watch the Packer game. Okay. That's the only reason why I was, was out here. Okay, so let's go with this. How did you come? I know you saw Erica yesterday in Waukesha. How did you come? to meet with her in Waukesha, one, and two, you say you don't know Waukesha, but where did you meet her? I was supposed to be getting some money from her. How did, okay. For what? Um, it was the rest of my money that she had of mine that she was holding for me. Okay, how much? Um, it was supposed to be $350 Okay. Whose car did you use to get out to Waukesha? I didn't use anybody's car. Where does your friend live? My well, friend lives in Milwaukee. So you, you didn't walk to Waukesha. Whose car no, did you guys use? My to get friend. Out to I just said it. My what friend. What type of car is he? I. I'm just trying to figure out how you got here. Yeah, I know, but it seemed like you trying to like spin me up or something. Like I'm just asking how you got here. Whose car did you drive out here? I didn't drive at all. What car did you come out here in? My friend. You know, I don't entirely know all that, okay? I'm just right now trying to figure out how you get out here. Every hour or so, my boss, he knows we're out here. I just got to call him and say, yeah, we're talking. I'll call you back later. Just got to step out, throw in a line with him, and we'll come back. Just chill out here, enjoy your soda. We'll be right back, all right? Sound good? Okay. So we... Done talking or no? No, we'll no, no. We'll come back. Just chill out. We'll be back. We I just got to make that call. So I just got to make that call. That check-in call. 
All right. In the middle of the conversation. Well, do you want to tell me about the car? We need to go another couple minutes. You been straight up with me? You been straight up with me, right? Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is I just want to know what I'm looking at and if I can just notify my girls. That's it. I don't have a problem with talking to you guys at all. I just want to know what am I looking at. That's Before it. Before we have to start, she called about some domestic abuse related stuff. Often, the best technique for getting a suspect to trust and cooperate with you is to convince them that you are their friend and you are on their side. And it is in their best interest to speak and cooperate with you. Investigators apply these techniques by being as transparent as reasonably possible. This, however, was not the approach used in the case of Darrell Brooks. Up until this moment, the detectives were trying to use the information regarding the recent altercation between Darrell and Erica as a cover, with the goal of building a rapport and getting small pieces of information regarding Darrell's whereabouts and state of mind preceding the parade massacre. They were also attempting to confirm details that they'd already collected, such as Darrell's vehicle, recent timeline, or potential accomplices. With Darrell beginning to realize the true gravity of the situation, the detectives will now have to use brute force and become more direct with Darrell if they want any chance at a confession. This means confronting Darrell with as much evidence as they have against him, until he either submits to the pressure, digs himself deeper and deeper into a hole of lies, or keeps quiet and asks for a lawyer. Now would certainly be a wise time for Darrell to choose option three. However, as you'll find out later in this video, that just isn't his style. You don't have a car, so Marcus had to bring you out. You don't own a car, your mom doesn't own a car, right? So Marcus had to bring you out. So why did we find you with a car key in your pocket? It wasn't in my pocket. I don't even know where they said that was laying on the ground. That's yours. Yeah. It's it's yours. It should have been by my ID. Yeah, it's yours. It's your car key, okay? Because it goes to a Ford Escape in your mom's name covered in Waukesha. You know what happened yesterday for the people. Tell me what happened. Well, what? With the car. What am I being With your mom's for? car. You were driving goofy, people called in. You drove out of there in your mom's car, the red car. You are driving a little silly, probably because you're pissed. You met up with Erica in the car at the park. She got in, you talked, and what you're telling me seems pretty consistent that there was nothing physical between the two of you. No, I did, no. But you met her in the car. I don't really know what happened between you two because there are things you haven't been honest about. Okay, so yeah, just questions. because I wasn't right. honest about my mom's truck and all that, that makes me dishonest about me beating up my baby mama? Brings it, definitely raises questions. When she, when she tells you guys that this didn't happen, how can I even trust that the charges will be dropped? When she's not mad or angry anymore, that's just what she does this all the time. All right, Darrell, can you stand up for me? I do have to put handcuffs on you. Oh, it's all good. It's all good, man. I know. I know what's going on, man. Ah, this is the shoulder. <laughs> I know you didn't know, so. Yeah, no. Brooks would continue to deny any involvement in the Waukesha Christmas Parade tragedy and was charged with 76 criminal counts, including six counts of first-degree intentional homicide. There are many cases in which the suspect's intense personality and antics make it into the interrogation room, whether it be some kind of narcissistic god complex. What happened after you drove up here? After you drove oh, up here, go yourself. What happened after you drove up yourself? What do you think, I can't kick you upside the head with my f***ing boot right now? I'll make you wear this size A, motherfucker. Or sheer ignorance regarding how the interrogation process works. What happened next? What happened next, and she just kept hitting her head against the, against the wall when she was sitting on the bed, and I was like, and I grabbed her, and I like shook her, I was like, stop, like, we need to, like, and looked at her, I was like, we need to, like, talk about this, and like, I mean, I was on holding her arms and stuff. No, I mean, she was not screaming. Yeah, she should have been. Probably. These characteristics rarely make it into the court during trial, at least not to the same unadulterated extent, due to the process of acquiring a defense counsel. Once a defendant has been charged, they have the option to seek counsel, and if they have no one in mind or they cannot afford one, the court will appoint an attorney for them. 
Having a professional by your side, whose job is to tell you what to say and what not to say, is usually a no-brainer for defendants when they are facing significant charges. Knowing the complicated ins and outs of the court system are how these people make a living, but more importantly, protect the rights of their defendant. It takes a special kind of person to ignore these facts. Some would argue that this hypothetical person would be a mixture of the two personalities described before, because, in their minds, only an ignorant narcissist could make such a ridiculous choice. Darrell Brooks did exactly that. Motion to withdraw. I do want to start out with you, Mr. Brooks, and ask you, is it your desire to represent yourself in this case? Uh, it is. Uh, I would like to proceed in this matter uh, a prior persona, not pro se. Say that last part again. I would like to proceed in this matter in pro per, not pro se. So you're going to have to tell me what you think that means. Um, it is me exercising my right to defend myself, to represent myself as a sovereign citizen. So in, essentially, this matter today would be me appearing by special appearance. You have an absolute right to have an attorney represent you. It is protected not only by the Wisconsin Constitution, but the United States Constitution. Do you understand that? Um, I do understand my rights under the United States Constitution, yes. Did you hear what I said? Uh, repeat it. Do you understand that you have the right to have an attorney represent you, what we call the right to counsel? Under the Sixth Amendment, correct? Under the Sixth Amendment, the 14th Amendment, and the Wisconsin Constitution as well. It's a well-established right that a criminal defendant has. Do you understand that? I'm aware, yes. Darrell Brooks made the decision to represent himself in the court of law by defending himself. Darrell had no professional by his side to operate as a filter. The absurdity that ensued went viral. A wave of sensational headlines and video clips from the trial spread across the internet, with all the focus being on Darrell's behavior during the trial. Once or, again, you're doing this tactic. Because to try to it, it's not a tactic, it's what facts. We're talking it's about facts. To some other reason. It's facts. Because I, I find it hard to believe that. Um, I'm going to let the state sudden, nobody hears what I say. I'm going to let the Moment. state make Stop. a record of why they believe Stop. it's objectionable because I haven't let them do that. There are times when waiving the right to an attorney has benefited some defendants. In some situations, jurors can actually feel some empathy for the defendant, emotionally affecting their decision. But Darrell Brooks was definitely not garnering any empathy in this courtroom. He was convicted of statutory sexual seduction, pled guilty in March of 2007 to that felony offense, and is a sex offender on the registry as a result. So if there's any causation that would lead to Erica Patterson being a bad mom, Mr. Brooks has a direct role in that causation. And that's Further more, to that, I'm not because sure. that's a lie. Let him at finish. The end of the day, Let if him we, finish. If we don't open the Mr. door on that Brooks. nonsense. He want to make a record and not be accurate. So let's be ac accurate all on the record since you think you know so much. Once so again, we can Mr. open Brooks the door on. We can open the door on how old she told she was. Interrupting. We, we can ask that question. He is to him. over the top and right now. Do you know that? Mr. Brooks, I'm ordering you to sit down and to let the state no, finish. No, that's not. I'm not going to sit here and let somebody be inaccurate on the record and lie on the record. Right. It's not a game. We. I don't take I this have, as a game. That's what. That's what nobody. To you that's what nobody. Time. You don't got to explain nothing to me. Do you want? That's what you don't understand. You think you that this is a whole game to me? Question? This is not a game to me, Your Honor. Not, nothing about this is a joke. Mr. Your life is not on the line. Mine is. And you think that I think this is funny? With all due respect, I think you so deserve some take respect. So we five minute break. And when we come back, the jury's coming out and you need to call your next witness. Thank you. Don't nobody, ain't nobody gonna talk to me like that. Nobody. I don't have a problem with doing what you asked me to do, not tell me.
Yeah, it, make a ruling. It threw people off the loop. They weren't ready for it. They scared of it. That's what it is. Come on, man. <sighs> Mr. Brooks. Come on, man. Stop. When you you Stop are it. you are Stop even it. letting You're a public me ask servant, Your Honor. I, I respect your courtroom. I you respect do. you. You're a public servant, though. Your job is to be the referee. I would like to provide the defendant and the court with. So that had to be that had to be said. So it's the defendant. That's not how it was said. Uh, that, that was how I said. You want to run the record back? Mr. Brooks. So I'm the only one. I got one. Mr. I got Brooks. one ear that work and I heard that. This on, is man. to benefit on, you so no, that you not. understand Ain't none your of this witness to benefit me, so let's has be clear a prior record. Do not interrupt Attorney Opper. So can your you Honor, tell, I can believe you he has seven prior criminal convictions. Be owed up from 2006. Right, I need to take a break. This man right now is having a stare down with me. It's very disrespectful. He pounded his fist. Frankly, it makes me scared. Darrell frequently argued directly with the judge and would call out bizarre legal theories that had no basis in law or reality. For example, he would constantly bring up that he is a sovereign citizen, which meant that he was not a citizen of the United States. In theory, that meant the law had no control over him. This was just one of many ways that Darrell delayed the courts throughout the trial. But with each new problem that Darrell brought up, Judge Doro swiftly dealt with it. All right, I'm going to um, excuse everyone. Mr. Brooks is being removed from the courtroom. Mr. Brooks is going to be removed. Something, All right, I'm directing the bailiffs that, to remove him to the have. other courtroom. Come on, come on, come on, come on. No, homicide have been proved as to count six. On or about Sunday, November 21 of 2021, on Main Street in the city of Waukesha, sub B of the Wisconsin statutes. The 10th count of the information in this case, 30 sub 1, 939.50 sub 3 sub F. And this while the decision to waive his right to an attorney is widely regarded as a horrible decision, disruptive behavior may have actually been the best strategy, considering the position that he had put himself in. As said by Tom Grieve, a criminal defense attorney based in Madison, Wisconsin, it's really going to be a challenging trial for the witnesses. You have a defendant who feels like he has nothing to lose. He's going to try to make as big of a mess as possible and force a fumble by the prosecutors or judge and try to force a mistrial or build an appeal. It's easy to watch these clips and become frustrated at how Darrell is behaving in such a sensitive case. This frustration, anger, and emotional exhaustion was only amplified for the hundreds of friends, family members, and other witnesses affected by this tragic event. Many of these witnesses testified, and reliving these events took a toll on everybody involved. Some of the witnesses at the stand who saw the driver of this vehicle described the man as having a focused and intentional look on his face as he rammed through the crowds of people. Although it's not the highlight of this trial in the eyes of the media, Media. Darrell Brooks did actually have some defenses against the prosecution's evidence. Darrell had three main defenses. First, that the person driving the car was not him at all. He claimed that there was a lack of evidence to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he was the person driving the vehicle. He questioned multiple witnesses who couldn't get a clear view of the driver at the time of the incident. On the other hand, there were also multiple witnesses who claimed to have seen the driver clearly, and that he resembled Darrell. This takes a lot of credibility away from Darrell's defense unless he could somehow discredit these witnesses. Second, he claimed that there was a malfunction or a potential mechanical error with the SUV. Since part of his case was to challenge the idea of him being the vehicle operator in the first place, he is now suggesting that whoever was driving that vehicle was most likely experiencing a mechanical error, and that the car's path of destruction was out of their control. Third, he claimed that whoever was driving that vehicle did not do it intentionally. Some of the witnesses of the crime heard the driver honking their horn. Darrell Brooks used this fact to claim that the driver wasn't causing any harm intentionally and was attempting to warn people to move out of the way. After about three hours of deliberations, the jury had reached a unanimous decision. And on October 26, 2022, Darrell Brooks was found guilty on all 76 of his charges. We, the jury, find the defendant, Darrell E. Brooks, guilty of first degree intentional homicide as charged in count two of the information. Did the defendant commit first degree intentional homicide while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. Or in hell, you piece of shit. Hey, you are to be removed right now. You will not do that. Please 
We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first-degree intentional homicide as charged in count three of the information. And I should state as to count two, it was signed and dated by the foreperson, same as to count three. Did the defendant commit first-degree intentional homicide while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. About three weeks later, the families and survivors of the Waukesha Christmas Parade attack were finally able to say exactly what was on their minds and speak to Darrell directly. My name is Alicia Kulik, and I am the youngest daughter of Jane Kulik. I've tried to figure out where to start, and there really isn't anywhere specific to start off with. I can't put all of my emotions onto however many pieces of paper because they're just not enough, at least in my mind. I've waited for this day, both anxiously, yet ready to share my piece on the matter. I'm here, up, I'm here speaking upon behalf of my mother and the rest of my family and my twin brother standing right next to me. I've been to most of the trial that I can make it to, as it is my first year in college, and I, my mom would want me to put my schooling first. <sighs> I don't think that it had been two hours since she left that my dad got a phone call from someone my mom had been marching with, stating that she had been hit by a car. At first, I thought my dad was just upset about something over work, because that's kind of common. <laughs> um, or what my mind went to was that maybe the after parade traffic was pretty bad and somebody just, she collided with another car, not a car to person. Ambulances were surrounding the hospital and the waiting room was a triage. I will never forget the things I saw that day. I will never forget the chaos of parents searching for their children, demanding answers as we were for my mom. When they brought us back to the room and told us to sit down, you just know, you just know. I had to prepare myself for what I was about to hear. Hearing that my mom had deathly injuries in her head and her lungs and all the rest of her organs, and she was deceased. That is the words that he used. He was de she was deceased. That is something that I will never be able to unhear, along with what I saw in the triage of that hospital waiting room that day. Oftentimes when I hear sirens, I'm scared. I'm scared that another family has to go through what I went through, what my family went through. Please don't do that. It's so disrespectful. I've watched all day on TV, and I've watched you mock all of the victims all day. You roll your eyes and you make faces. If this was your eight-year-old daughter that someone else hit, you would have been beside yourself if someone made those faces. And you want people to have forgiveness for you and your child? You're insane. I hope that, that the judge puts the most amount of, of years on your sentence, and I hope that you live in hell for the rest of your life for what you have done to all of these victims. Do you realize after you hit me and my mother-in-law, I spent five minutes walking around looking for my daughter on the ground. I was looking for her through little girls that were keeled up in little fetal positions because you had ran them over. You hit them with 3,300 pounds and you don't care. Right before you hit me, I turned around and I looked at you. I didn't see your car. I saw the look in your eye. You knew exactly what you were doing. You knew exactly what you wanted to do. And that was because you are a narcissistic piece of shit that thinks you can get away with everything. Before Judge Doro would mandate his sentence, Darrell was given the opportunity to speak as well. <sighs> Yeah, I do have a, a lot to say. I'm gonna like to stand up if I may. Go ahead. Um, this is the most. 
folks should know I, I apologize for taking so long you get minimal time to uh, reflect in in a place like this but one of those minimal times that you get to reflect in a place like this is when you're alone in your cell when it's just you in the walls one of the victims made a comment um, about trying to understand why this happened that's a question I struggle with myself the why the how how could life ever get this far away from what it should be Darrell was given a total of two hours to speak before receiving his sentence, and he made sure to make use of that entire time limit. Darrell would apologize indirectly to the victims and their families, and he would ramble on about his religious beliefs. Immediately following this, Darrell Brooks was finally read his sentence. Frankly, Mr. Brooks, no one is safe from you. This community can only be safe if you are behind bars for the rest of your life. The actions of Daryl Brooks demand punishment. The community is not safe from your violent and criminal conduct unless you are in custody. On November 16th, 2022, Darrell Brooks was given six consecutive life sentences. Judge Doro also sentenced Darrell to 17 and a half years for each of the 61 counts of first degree recklessly endangering safety with the use of a dangerous weapon, resulting in an additional 762 years in prison. It goes without saying that a lot of cases like this one take a gut-wrenching toll on everybody involved. While a lot of this case, and the media surrounding it, has been focused on Darrell, what's more important are the victims who lost their lives on November 21st, 2021. There is no means of reparation for what Darrell Brooks took from the victims' families, but at least now, they can sleep better at night knowing that the monster who stole the lives of their loved ones is in a place where he can never do anything like this again. And with the madness of Darrell's trial behind them, Waukesha County could finally focus on preparing for the 59th annual Christmas Parade. Susan and uh, these ladies are full of just joy. I've been hanging out with them as we kick things off and we got to hurry because the parade is taking off. But I'm with Kathy S, who is an OG. That's an I original am. granny. Yes. 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 And then I have Kathy G, who's a new granny. Yes. Hello. And I just want you to talk quickly about uh, your Facebook post this morning said this is probably one of the most important dates in the dancing granny's history. If you would talk more about that. You know what it is, um, I've been with the Dancing Grannies for about a year and a half and having lost ladies last year, but we have gained so many more. So this is so important because the few, of, the few of us that are here that were at the parade, we have so much support from the brand new grannies that are here and we could not have done this without them. Yeah, that they is. Are, they're our strength in numbers. Mm -hmm. And speaking of numbers, uh, quickly, you're wearing a number four on the back of your hats today, right? Um, well, some, the original grannies are actually wearing okay. four. Okay, yeah, I'll talk about that. The four is actually for the four fallen grannies and uh, Bill. So we have our four on our hats. All right, well, we thank you. We're gonna let these ladies get started, but we're gonna end on a very happy note. I've taught these ladies the Beyonce challenge for TikTok. Are you ready, ladies? Here we go. Five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Woo, go girls. And there you go. Milwaukee's dancing grannies. They are absolutely lovely. 
Take it away, ladies. <laughs>